unusual in the last two years running. Um, can you talk about just why the offense has evolved that way and why, why it's being featured? Well, it started last year because George Pickens got hurt. And then, you know, we were young at certain spots at receiver. And as the year, you know, went on and on, Brock had kind of established himself as kind of a difference maker. And so and kind of this, this year, kind of the same way, like trying to get the ball to the guys that give us the best chance to win. And he's one of those, just like Darnell and Kenny McIntosh and Ladd are. So probably just works itself out that way. And then this year, A.D. Mitchell got hurt. So, you know, sometimes injuries force yourself in that direction and obviously trust in a given player. Right, right. And it was, is Darnell ready to go? Do you know yet? I anticipate he'll play. Mm -hmm. And this is really, I mean, this is part of a larger trend um, offensively. Four tight ends are catching passes across college football. Why do you think the game is evolving that way? Of them? I think the game started to evolve. <laughs> I'll give it just a random 10 years ago when the air raid, and it was probably earlier than that, give it 15 years, but started more when you had uh, air raid wise. So you have bigger wideouts that learn how to route run. It's one thing to have size, it's another to have ball skills and route running ability. So I think as you see more um, athletic size uh, players that have skill, I think that becomes. Uh, an advantage in terms of certain matchups. And when it comes to being able to run the ball and throw the ball and play action, I think that's where your tight ends come in more to play. Teams that are still spread, that's not so much, but teams that utilize the tight ends and condensed sets like us, I mean, that they become an integral part of what you do. Yep. Some of the things are the same. Uh, some of the intangibles that you're looking for. The difference in the NFL, well, first of all, um, in evaluating any player, including quarterbacks, they haven't done it at your level, unless you're talking about the portal or a free agent, which is kind of what we're talking. If they're a young player out of high school, they haven't played at your level. And if they're you know, a college player going to the NFL, they haven't played yet at that level. So. Um, what you're looking for a lot of the same things, you know, accuracy, toughness, athleticism, um, intelligence, um, you know, arm talent, all of those things that give yourself a chance to win. So a lot of the same characteristics uh, are important. Uh, more importantly, having good players around them, that's, a, that's an important piece. How do you try and project the, the high school kids whose offenses might be all over the board in terms of what they do at their high school? Sure, there's variances of that. The NFL has to deal with the same thing when you're talking about spread offenses compared to not and you know what they're going to ask guys to do, like potentially being under center. They've never been under center or, or being involved in protections uh, and understanding um, every aspect of, of, uh, of the game plan and run game and those kind of things. So that's a part of it. But I think you continue to see just an evolution of the game. There's more of the high school game that got to college and the college game that's in the NFL in terms of spread. I mean, all you got to do is watch the Chiefs and the Dolphins, and you're seeing spread offense, motion shifts, RPOs. So you're seeing a lot of that that, that carries over because that's what, that's what quarterbacks are comfortable with, at least what they've done. And last one, you know, in terms of your relationship with Stetson, how is that growing both personally and then what you can do on a football game together? Oh, I think uh, I've said this the last few weeks. I think any relationship builds over time or it fractures and breaks forever. I mean, either either you go your separate ways or you make it work. And we both done a good job this year of, um, I think, working towards the same end goal in a lot of ways. I think it's different this year because we went into the year with him being our starter, where last year we didn't. And then when JT came back, there was just there was it was different, different times. Uh, this year was knowing through the whole off season, once he's coming back, um, that he was the guy, and building that trust over time. You know, I think that's a big part of it. I think in any relationship, there's a certain amount of trust that that you have to have with each other. You know, I think that's that's big, especially from his end. You know.
No, I remember watching him on film when I first got here. He was uh, different than what I just talked about. He wasn't really an air raid Y. He was more of a running back F novelty, get the ball to him. That's where you can see um, some of his special qualities, which is run after catch, and you can get him the ball in a lot of ways. He's a developmental route runner, so that is still where he's working. Um, and he, you knew he was a hard worker from what you could see, how he played the game, and all the information we got. There's certain things we didn't expect. We didn't expect him to be as mature as he was a year ago, to count on a true freshman to play like he did and um, be as squared away as he is. I think that's probably the biggest thing is, you know, there's a lot of really good players um, that aren't really ready as freshmen. They're just, they're just not. It's just um, everything's different. So when you get a young player like Brock Bowers who is mature beyond his years in a lot of ways, um, it allows him to play earlier and at a high level. I think you learn in this profession to not look too far ahead. Uh, I think when you're younger and you first start off, I think everybody has aspirations of ending up somewhere. My, all my family's in high school coaching, so you know I, wa I wanted to do it at the college level, and uh, you have aspirations, but a lot of things have to go your way. You have to be a lot around a lot of really good coaches to learn from, a lot of really good players to help you get to where you're at and get lucky. Um, and, and I've been fortunate in a lot of ways, but I've learned over the years to not really think about what's next because you don't you don't know that you don't know someone decides they don't want you you decide you're somewhere else this profession will humble you so all you do is the best job you can where you're at and um and that's what's expected of you from your boss i mean is to do the best job you could can at the time and i, I wouldn't if you'd ask me what i have thought 10 years previous to then that I would have been calling plays with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I would have said no, you know, or you say, would you anticipate being here and playing for a national championship? Well, no, because you just, there's certain things that you're hopeful for, uh, but all you do is the best job you can and, uh, and then you play it out where it ends up. Well, first off, I'm always humble when someone thinks enough of me. I'm humbled that someone thinks enough of me to interview me for any job. Um, all I've done is what I've ever wanted to do, and that's be involved with football. Um, from a little kid, I've been part of a team since I've been five. I've been part of a team for 51 years. So that's all you ever want to do is be part of a team and do the best you can. And so you're humbled. I grew up a Packer fan as a little kid because I grew up in Chicago and all my family's Bear fans and I like to argue so it worked out perfect. They're all Cub fans, I'm Cardinal fans so it's just perfect. So to be interviewed by them for any potential possibility was, uh, it was an unbelievable experience, you know. And, uh, you know, they hired the right guy. You know, Matt LaFleur's done a great job. And so, you know, as did the Bengals, as did, you know, so it's, uh, this is where I was meant to be. I always look at it that way. Um, and so, like I said, be where your feet are and embrace where you're at at that moment. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, when you talk different leagues, you know, it's... Um, we don't see a ton of it in our league, and you see a ton of it in the Big 12 when you get film there of that style that Iowa State, I think, I don't know, where it kind of started there. They kind of out of the start, and everybody's kind of made it their own. A lot like when someone says air raid, 
sure there's a foundation and then people have to make it their own in terms of concepts and how you approach practice and do that. And they've done a fantastic job with it. And you can see teams throughout their league um, have some success with it and have some struggles with it. And like any defense, it um, starts with their scheme and then it starts with their personnel. And they both they do both extremely well. They're very well coached. They play awfully hard and they have talented players. You don't get to this point without having that. And so, and they're at a, there comes a point where I think all of a sudden there's a belief in what they're doing, belief in the head coach, belief in each other, and they play like that. They play with a chip on their shoulder. What do you have to do to be successful? Well, I think everybody says, oh, yeah, we got to be able to run the football, and they're this three down. But I think one coach told me it's like a vacuum. You know, you think it's there, and then they just swarm on you. And sure, there's times you can get some attrition runs. Uh, you can run it up in there if you get the right look. But I said it last week, like every week. I mean, one, you can never control the game if you can't run the football. I think TCU would believe that as well. As much spread as they are, they run the football. And then how can you be explosive? This isn't any different against the 3-3-5 or against what we do. It's exactly what Garrett's going to try to do and we're going to try. Be able to run the ball and be able to get explosive plays because it's hard to score if you're not explosive. I mean, you'll probably look at the games. TCU, yeah, this year, when they were explosive, they scored. When they weren't, it was harder to score. It's the same with us. It's really no different. they got really good coaches. They do a great job what they do. Uh, I'm a big fan of that style, what they do. I'm a big fan of the Big 12. I've coached there before. Um, I think what Sonny's done in them is incredible. And um, we're excited to get to play them. I think I think it's awesome. I'm going to go back, and I'm getting on a little rant here. I think it's awesome that the playoff committee decided to reward them for winning their league. And they very easily could have gone the other way. And TCU deserved to be here, and I'm excited to play them. Well, he's a big reason why we're here. I mean, there, but there's no bones about it. I mean, he's played exceptionally well. Um, he's got a great feel for what we want to do. And so he's gotten a lot better. Uh, we've gotten better at how we do it and how we prepare and prepare him. Sure, like any quarterback, they have their moments. Um, but that's that's... Same with me as a play caller. There's moments where you wish you had a play back, play call back, or someone says you'd, they'd rather run it than throw it, and that's the same play quarterback. Because when you when you're a decision maker, you're going to be in that position. Doesn't matter. Kirby making certain decisions as a parent, right? You make decisions as a business owner, as a play caller, as a quarterback. You're never going to be perfect, and we've grown to trust him a lot more, and he's earned that. And um, so I think that's a big part of it, but uh, he's a big reason we're where we're at. Well, well, I think the hardest part is I hate it when I call. 70 plays and all of them don't work okay so it's frustrating the third quarter was frustrating last week to me okay so in our execution and my play calling um i think we all strive to have a player play, play perfect and do things within the system and when it doesn't go that way um you're frustrated with yourself did i did i not do a good enough job of explaining certain things that we expect from every player and, um, you know, there were moments in the game like that, including myself. So I think there's, you know, I think Stetson's been around us to know that we can say things and yet him still believe that we have his back. Or maybe, you know, a younger player, someone that just got here, that might fracture their um, confidence. And I don't believe that's the case with Stetson.
Stetson's had his moments, as we all have. What's been in this time with you, your favorite moment on the field, off the field, during the week on Saturday? What's been the one that's favorite been? moment? Wow, that is that is a great question. Um, Probably my favorite moment, if you just said football-wise, is the series we had against Alabama last year after he fumbled. And we unloaded on the shots and specials, and he handled it, and we went right down the field and scored. And that, that says who he is. Uh, not everybody's capable of making a mistake. And then a little bit like last week, you know, the interception led to 21-7, and, okay, we battle our way back, and get ourselves to where we're actually leading and then they score before half. I think he has that about him, but that's probably, if you said a a moment of, um, in a game, that would be it. Okay, second thing, playing, this is the highest stakes and that you only have, you have so much less time to prepare. It's almost like a normal week. How does that affect uh, everything that's at stake? How do you use it? I guess we'll know in about two days because it's hard to know. Uh, they have the same issue. Uh, they they had to travel back from from a site like we did. We had probably a little bit longer flight, but it's it's all the same how we handle the trip and the practices that we have. And you know, like both teams, are you satisfied? Is that is this it? You're satisfied to just get here? You know, I kind of look at it a little bit. Um, from a competitive standpoint, there's times probably in college that I, when it was finals, I looked at it and said, well, no matter what, it's over. Or are you trying to compete to get the best grade possible? I mean, are you, are you here just for the trip or are you here to finish this and do something special? Something that that team last year did not do. They did not go undefeated. They didn't win the league. And uh, do something that, frankly, it's is hard with the guys we lost last year. And it's a different team. That's one thing to just always keep reminding yourself is um, every team's different. And um, the personnel's different. And uh, trust in, in your recruiting and the talent that you have. So I think both teams have to deal with, like you said, the schedule. We went a month without playing. And then you go a quick turnaround and then you're playing again. And so, but they have the same, they have the same issue we have. No, it's the first time I've heard it. Okay. I was just curious if that was... Uh, like I'm trying to think of more plays in the middle eight. Um, maybe because we defer a lot, so that means you're going to get the ball again to start the middle eight. Probably if you looked at it and that's the case, we probably ran less plays in the first quarter than most if you end up deferring. Uh, I don't know that per se. Um, it's not like we're trying to go faster. It's not like we're trying to think about that per se. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it just works out that way. Well, I'm going to say, first of all, I think uh, from a player's standpoint, start off representing themselves and their family and the hard work they've put in. And all of our players got to where they're at because they had family that cared about them and raised them the right way and got them on a course not only athletically, but academically to have success. And that's probably the most awesome thing we get to deal with when you're in college, is seeing young people come from all different backgrounds and as a team work together to strive for one goal. And we also strive to create the best version of our players from an academic standpoint, from a father, from a husband. All of those things are super important. And I think, first of all, I'd hope our players would embrace how far they've come in a lot of ways. Some maybe would have expected to get to this point, and sometimes maybe not. Then I would hope representing 
um, University of Georgia. Um, I would hope that's what they would next. And obviously, we feel like we play in a tremendous football league. And that's been proven in terms of the number of teams that have had a chance to play for the national championship from our league. I do believe good football is good football. I don't believe that's just one league that has, you know, monopoly on it. But I do believe that our best teams have always had a chance to play for a national championship. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Good teams are good teams, bad teams are bad teams. We've had a variety of teams that have had a chance to be able to play for it. And I think that's a credit to the coaching. Uh, it's a credit to the area where we're at in terms of football being important. Uh, but good football is good football. TC is a good football team, irrespective of league. I don't I don't know if evolving's probably it. Um, I think the game has changed in a lot of ways. Um, so I think you get to a certain point and you realize that I think the rules of the game are changing, which is advantages to the offense in some ways. Uh, space players. But when I said that, I didn't mean it per se that it's what Kirby wants to do. What I meant is he's the head coach of Georgia, and wherever I've been, it's been their offense. When I was at Oklahoma State, it was Mike Gundy's offense. Wherever I've been, it's, it's you represent the University of Georgia and Kirby Smart. And what we do is, is a byproduct of philosophically what I like to do, and then our players that enable us to do what we want to do, and Kirby signing off on it and understanding that we believe this is the best way for us to have success by the way we attack people. Well, I think what I said probably the most about Stetson is that um, I think he has a rare ability to forget and get up off the mat and continue to compete. I think that's probably his, his greatest quality, which is not easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for most people when things don't go your way and when you've got a lot on, on your shoulders, throw an interception, fumble the football, make a mistake, because he's always touching the football. I think he has a rare ability to keep battling and um, I think that's, it's been impressive. So, uh, when I was in the years ago, here at Coach Monkey, Coach, we've been working hard this week. We have a lot of interesting play quality coming up. What are your odds of running a quick number back to Not likely. You heard it here first. Warren Burks will not touch the ball in the <laughs> You bet, Warren. Well, I talked about two before you, you got up here. One was, that's okay. No, you, how would you know? I mean, you don't have to apologize. There's a lot of shit we got to apologize in life for. That wasn't one of them, all right? Um, last year against Alabama, he fumbles. They get the ball. We hold him to a field goal, thank God. And then we go right down the field. We were explosive. He made a bunch of plays. And then last week, he threw a pick, and it got 21-7. And we came, we ended up scoring 17 straight points to take a 24-21 lead. That, that just says who he is. It just says how he's wired. You know, he's just, he's wired to forget, believes in himself. He believed in himself even when we didn't. And that's impressive. No. Well, when I got here, you know, he had come back, Justin Fields had left and Stetson was there. And, you know, we are, we're not any different than um, than most. There's preconceived notions of whatever we see, the way a person looks, the way they carry themselves, um, a star rating, what someone else says about somebody. We take it as gold. 
We do it all the time. Well, I won't speak for you guys. I do it all the time. And I'm wrong. And you look to others at times because of those perceptions. And at times, you're not always um, as astute to just look at what the product looks like. And uh, I think that, that, that there's, all, there's a lot of times in life you get taught a valuable lesson, and that, that's one of them. We're blessed. Those guys are all, we're blessed. Those guys are great football players. I'm just fired up they're all going to be here in the spring because we're in a time and place where that doesn't happen. And uh, those guys are really, really talented players. And I'm excited to have them all this spring. Obviously, I'm not worried about that now, but you asked me a direct question as to those players. And, and they've been very, very supportive of what we do, how we do it, how we coach them, and Stetson. Well, what you find out is, like our two MVPs last week, Stetson Bennett and Bullard, neither one of those guys were, you know, you weren't on everybody's five-star list. There's good football players everywhere, and he's a good football player. You know, he's tough, he's physical, he's faster than you think, he's got great instincts. So, you know, he plays in their system well. I mean... Anybody that plays for a team that's in the national championship has talent. That's crazy. We all have perceptions. Had he been the same player, been playing for Alabama? I don't know. He might have had, I don't know. We all have it. It's not whatever you want to call it, you know, different perceptions of how someone looks or what place they're at or what ranking they have. Or, and obviously they were right, right? I mean, obviously they made an astute evaluation and said, this guy's good enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Just look at Stetson. Stetson's was at the Heisman, for God's sakes. I mean, he was at Jones Junior College eight years ago. So, I mean, all you have to do is look at that and say, there is no direct route. And um, so, congratulations to him and for TCU. That's, you know, they've got a number of guys like that, you know, where, hey, you got to do a great job evaluating. You got great... Great job of coaching them. Great job of putting them in positions where they can be successful. You know, where do they fit this position, this role? And that's the art of it. Well, you'll be hard pressed to find someone that loves the University of Georgia more than Stetson Bennett. You know, I mean, I think growing up. First of all, we all have dreams. All right, we all have, I want to be the head coach here. I want to be a movie star. I want to fly to the moon. You know, I want to be a fireman, whatever the hell you want to be when you're a kid. And Stetson Bennett wanted to be the quarterback at Georgia. And that, that is rare that you get to where whatever that dream might have been, whatever that would have been. And I'm too old to remember what that dream was, but I know what his was. And uh, I think that's awesome. You mentioned uh, the three other quarterbacks in the room, uh, Carson, Brock, and Gunner. What do you think they do uh, really well right now? What are some of the things they need to work on? Uh, well, I think, first of all, we start with Carson. He's been there since I've been there. And then Brock's been there for a year and a half. I think the longer they're with you, have an understanding of expectations, concepts, don't have to learn new things, you know, embracing their role. Um, so they've done a great job. And it's never easy. Everybody wants to play. You know, it's hard to see down the road, all of us. Uh, and you try to tell them, Lou Holt said this to me when I was a GA, and I'm not going to do it in his voice, but I would say that 
Everybody wants to be a chief before they're a really good brave. There's a lot to that. Everybody wants to be the chief before they've done everything else to be a, a brave, and he's right. And um, those guys have done a great job of learning how to be great braves and putting themselves in a position to be the chief. Well, I mean, good defense is good defense, and good programs are good programs. And Ohio State has tremendous talent, and they're very well coached. And I always say this, sometimes plays just work, and sometimes they don't. And um, I think you end up with coming up with your scheme and then fighting your rear end off during the week to get the best looks you can, compete the best you can, hold them to a high standard, and you hope that on Saturday, Sunday, whenever that is that you play, or Monday, that it looks like you want it to look like. And um, that's, that's probably the biggest thing. Michigan, we played last year, is a really good defense, and they were even better this year. And Ohio State, really good on defense. And TCU, really good on defense. And most of the time, I would say all the time you get here, just like we played Ohio State, we always put up the team's statistical categories. Well, that's not always the case. Like, well, they're really good on offense, and they're really good on defense. That's why you're here, right? TCU's really good on offense. They're really good on defense. That's why they're here. And then we get to go play and figure it out. All right.